Hi, this is Little Dwarf playing games while rambling incoherently into a microphone. Why? Well, just because I can, and I continue with Alan Wake Blind. Let's go upstairs and have a closer look at the Drakkar. Huh. For a second there, I, I thought. Those were runes, but I, I think those are just some industrial markings regarding this piece of plywood. Like, presumably, thickness and whatever. Oh, they, they even have, like, a couple of rune stones. The, the Anderson brothers in the 70s. It's 1976. Madness reigns at the Anderson farm. Contrary to all logic, the head east ingredient of their moonshine is unfiltered water from Cauldron Lake. The Andersons feel like gods. Odin can't stop laughing. He contemplates cutting his eye out. Tor runs across the field, naked, shrieking, hammer in his hand, trying to catch lightning. Their songs have power. Something ancient is stirring in the depths, coming back. Hmm. The Viking boat looked imposing, almost like a battering ram. Old Gods of Asgard. The 1975 Ragnarok Tour. Be awed by celestial wrath and fury. Seattle, Bakersfield, Long Beach, New York City. Newark, Detroit, Jacksonville, Tampa, New Orleans, Baton Rouge. Okay. So I guess I'm probably going to use uh, the Drakkar uh, as a battering ram. I imagine this is what this does. I didn't even see the coffin at first. That's kind of weird. Where is Barry? Did he run forward? There's a dog house, but no dog. Where is Barry though?
Yeah, that's a lot of them. there. So I guess he did run forward to hide from them. He's uh, standing in the light. had quite a production going on. Oh, you know what, Al? If we make it through this alive, I'm gonna start representing them. Yep, sell this stuff online, maybe get a reality show going, release a new single. Good luck with that, pal. Hey, you find us a way out of here, okay? I'm gonna take a closer look at this stuff. Okay. Okay, of course I'm going to steal the coffee. It seems that's what Alan Wake does. He goes around the world and steals people's coffee. It's kind of hilarious that if everything is just a story that Alan wrote, uh, that Alan Wake wrote, then it's kind of hilarious that he actually devoted time to writing passages about him going everywhere and drinking random coffee he found in the gutter or whatever and i guess it's not it's not clear whether he's drinking it it's not even clear if there is uh, how, do I, how do i switch the lanterns like this is good don't get me wrong i'm just curious on a on a theoretical level because I, I picked up another flashlight and I don't remember how do you change them. Not that it matters. I'm satisfied with this one. As you regular listeners know, I tend to work through the night, but I'm not the only one. Deputies Mulligan and Thornton are taking a couple of moments off their busy schedule to join me here in the studio. Boys, how busy are you now? Deer Fest is almost here, isn't it? I, I bet that keeps you in business. Pretty busy, yeah. Actually, Pat, we've been real busy with other stuff. Which concerns an ongoing investigation. We can't talk about that, Thornton. I wasn't gonna say anything. I was just saying we got, you know, other irons to fry. And how would you compare your workload to last year's? Things have seemed relatively peaceful to me, but people do tend to get a little wild this time of year. Oh, it's wild, Pat. It's pretty wild. There's been all sorts of trouble this year. Vandalism, fighting, public disturbances. A lot of people gone missing, too. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the uh, usual stuff, Pat. Uh, just, you know, uh, a lot more of it. Now, is it just me, or does Deerfest get wilder every year? People seem to be more drunk, at least, or they start earlier and younger. Oh, it's definitely not just you, Pat, but... Definitely, Pat. Hey, I'm talking here, Thornton. Uh, oh shoot, I lost my train of thought. Not just me. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's wilder, Pat, but actually most of the trouble seems to be coming from grown men. People who ought to know better, you know? Kids are doing fine this year. 
Well, that's nice to hear, at least. Boys, I want to thank you for stopping by. I'll let you get back to your patrol. Sure thing, Pat. Yeah, sure thing, Pat. Okay. Let's continue. The elevator was dead. I'd have to get some power to it first. Well, that shouldn't be hard. I could see the building that had to be the Anderson's home on the other side of the field. It wasn't far now. I wasn't worried about trusting the ramblings of two burned out geriatric wrecks. They had the goods. Uh, okay, but what now? To be honest, I don't I don't think my chances are particularly great against that. Oh. Huh. I guess I was wrong. That was much easier than I thought it would be. Check this. There's a ladder. Hmm. Okay, let's, let's go down to here then. Okay, silo keys. So that should take care of of Barry's problems. Uh, Al? Is that you out there, buddy? Yeah, it's me. Hang on. Hey, let's go, man. I think we're gonna have to work together to open this gate, Al. Looks pretty heavy. I guess maybe I need, need an interaction button. So I'm, I'm running into it, but it does nothing. Ah! Hey, I think that's the farm on the other side of the field. We're almost there. Oh, the farm is a crazy place for crazy people. We should feel right at home then. They even have the uh, Viking shields in front of their actual house, and they've named it Valhalla. Okay, there's a chainsaw here, which seems kind of ominous. Like I'm, I'm expecting one of the taken to pick it up. Is he following me, or am I following him? Mm, 
I guess he is following me. I'm just checking the perimeter next to the house to make sure I don't miss anything. The lights are out. I guess we better check the fuse box. Mm. Okay, they, they have a lot of trash. Old girl Vasgard in the valley of my shadow. The power downstairs was out, but I was sure I could fix that at the fuse box. The power downstairs was out, but I was sure I could fix that at the fuse box. Huh, they even had like a practice stage uh, at home. Some fireworks. Come on, Al, let's get the lights on, huh? You know, this place looks kind of lived in. I thought the Andersons were on the booby hatch. Does it look lived in? Uh, wait, manuscript page. Uh, the mystery of the missing wig. Again, Alice's screams rang in the stillness of the night. I saw myself run toward the cabin, flashlight in my hand. I followed my past self. I was an out-of-body observer, a time traveler in a crazy drunken dream. This was the beginning. The night Alice had disappeared. The mystery of what had happened during the missing week was about to reveal itself. Well, that's a bit of a cliffhanger in the writing itself. message the Anderson's talking about. That's the whole reason we're here. Mm, it says here, old gods know the truth. Lady of the Light? Oh, that's gotta be, what's your face, the crazy lamp lady from the town. Cynthia Weaver. Right, must be. Okay? We need to find Cynthia Weaver. We'll stay here for the night and head back to town as soon as it gets light. Hey, Al. Lots of hours before dawn. Might as well get some rest. And by rest, I mean drunk. Come on. Okay, that's, just, that's a colossally stupid idea. Like, why would you allow yourself to get drunk in such a precarious situation? I'm gonna stick by you, no matter what, ever, Al. Sure, like a brother. I'm a writer, goddammit. Correct. If I just wanted to, I could write ten books a year. And and they'd be the best books that year. No, you couldn't. That's right, I couldn't. But I could, because I'm a writer. What? What 
do they put in this stuff? I feel like my brain is coming out of my nose. <laughs> I'm gonna get the recipe off those coots and be a, a, a booze millionaire. I just miss her, Barry. I just want her here with me. I know, Al. I know. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna make it okay. And is it is it where uh, Nightingale is going to find me? Because it mentioned Alan Wake being unconscious at the time, and then getting arrested. I guess I'm having some kind of weird out of body Alan, experience. I'm coming. It's all right. I'm coming. It was a crazy drunken dream, and yet it was more than that. It was the truth, a suppressed memory unearthed by the Andersons' moonshine. I was there, an out of body observer. This was the night Alice and I had arrived at Bright Falls, the night Alice had disappeared. I had a chance to find out what had happened. Whatever power had brought me back to this night at the lake was also stopping me from leaving. I had no choice but to see it through, to find out what had happened. I remembered being surprised to see the cabin dark. Alice would have never turned the lights off. Alice? Alice! I remembered thinking, I caught a glimpse of her form underwater, sinking into the darkness. <sighs> Diving after her was the last vague memory I had of that night. After that, the next thing I could remember was waking up behind the wheel of the crash car and finding the first pages of the manuscript. <sighs> I couldn't find her in all that blackness. I must have thought she drowned. Alice! Jagger had Alice, Alice. and so she had me. Alice! <coughs> I'd been easy prey. Look at the cabin. Is there someone in the window? Alice? Maybe she didn't drown after all. Maybe she's inside. Alice! Yes. Hmm. But I thought uh, Barbara Jagger didn't have her either. The dark presence had touched me. She had dug her nails into my brain and used me. Made me her puppet. As if she did. There was no point in her questioning the supposed kidnapper, because if she had Alice, then she would have known that they didn't. She must be here somewhere. Maybe upstairs in the study. Alice! Yes, that's where she is. You can apologize. Alice! You laugh at the whole thing together and put it behind you. Alice! She's not here. You were foolish to think so. No, she's dead. She drowned. No, no, no! It's your fault your wife is dead. You are guilty. All she wanted was to help you right. You killed her. Ah! Oh, hush. There's still hope. Cauldron Lake is a special place. Here, you have the power to change things. She wanted you to write. I will tell you what to do. You can write her back. The story will come true, and all will be well again. She had Alice, 
and the manuscript was the ransom for her. Yes. All right. I'll fix it. I'll bring her back. No. I wrote it. I remembered it all now. In the dark, I'd written for days, a week, almost a complete manuscript of a novel entitled Departure. Jagger had been my editor, whispering in my ear, making sure that the unfolding story would make her more and more powerful. I thought I was saving Alice. Even with the cobweb she put in my head, some part of me had been aware enough to write my escape into the story, to bring a light into the cabin to release me before I could finish, to interrupt the horror story before the ending, where darkness consumed everything and everyone. Zane was weak and far away, but I had written him into the story and his light had been enough to set me free. It is the year now. I'm here because it was written. I brought the light to set you free. You must hurry. You will know I'm here. It will be back soon. It stole the skin of my wife a long time ago. She looks so old. I had woken up, confused and groggy, my mind consumed by darkness and fear. All I could do was to escape. The week spent in the cabin had taken its toll. I was barely conscious and fading fast. It had to have cost Zane terribly, thrown him even deeper into whatever dark place he now haunted. But he had managed to weaken the dark presence, kept me safe that night. That's right, James Joyce. It's your fault, and you're gonna pay for it. Yeah, so that was the moment where Nightingale arrests me. And I guess it's also the end of the episode. And by episode, I mean the episode of the game. Uh-huh. 
Okay, that was a pretty awesome song. It's probably one my favorite on out of the ones Under the on the end of the, the episode. Presence, I wrote a horror story that is coming true. Jagger had been my editor, making sure that the unfolding story would make her more and more powerful. Some part of me had been aware enough to write my escape into the story. Together we can create something absolutely wonderful. The lake, it, it does something to the works of art created here. It makes them come true. My mom gave me this old light switch. The clicker. Alice is being kept in a dark prison. I need to find Cynthia Weaver to fix this. It's your fault, and you're gonna pay for it. Well, we're expecting a record crowd from the neighboring counties. Naturally, we hope to break the record set by last year's Moose Fest in our neighboring town, Walkery. Ladies and gentlemen, some people have asked me, what's the big deal about Deerfest? And I think that this sums it up. It's about friendship and community. We've got a great party coming up. Uh, let's try to hold it in until tomorrow and get through the night in one piece, all right? Someone will come for it when the time is right. Thomas said so. He wrote it. The key is insurance. It's my job to keep it safe. Safe in the light. Mm. Oh, it's in the light. Hello. Hello. All the manuscript pages were gone. The FBI agent had taken them. I think... I think my tongue just took a crap in my mouth. Ugh. Oh, wait, we're in jail now? Oh, ow. Ow, this is not good. That about sums it up. Oh, I am never drinking again. I need to talk to Weaver. She's the one in the song, the Lady of the Light. What, the crazy lady? Ugh, whatever you say, well, Al, but we're stuck here. Right They're not yeah, gonna... Even interviewed Wake. I had some reading to do first, Sheriff. And let me tell you, it was an interesting read. Well, I've got you now, Raymond Chandler. It's all here. All the evidence, including conspiracy to murder a federal agent. There's no way you're walking out of here. You hear me in there, Brett Easton Ellis? Huh? Agent Nightingale, I want to talk to your superior. Well, we all want things, Sheriff. I wanted my... <sighs> Look, that's not possible right now. Agent Nightingale, I insist. <sighs> Wake, what's wrong? Lady, are you stupid? It's a trick. It's an obvious trick. Okay, I've had enough of this crap. Wake, I'm gonna trust you with this. You're joking. Agent Nightingale, your opinion would matter more if you were sober and if I actually believed you were here on official business. Whoa! 
Get... Get back in the cell, Stephen King. The only way you're leaving this place is over my dead... Wait a minute. I know this... Oh my god! Light. We need light. It's the only way to fight this thing. In my office. I've got your things there. Follow me. Oh man! We're sitting ducks with the lights out. Stay cool. I can get the emergency power on. Well, first, let's take this page over here. Oh, there's another one. Nightingale tried to make sense of the manuscript. It was disjointed and strange. He didn't understand half of it, but it all rang true. Impossibly true. He took out his hip flask when he reached the page that described how he reached the page that made him take out his hip flask. It wasn't the booze that made his mind real. Yeah, right? That's a, that's what I kept talking about. This story uh, kind of loops. Like, it talks, it's continuously self-referential. It talks about itself. It talks about things happening as they happen and they are described as being described. If you know what I mean. Nightingale attacked by the Dark Presence. Nightingale felt the situation veering out of his control, but the gun at least felt steady in his hands. He was ready to fire, resolved that he would let this happen over his dead body. And yet he hesitated. He had seen this moment before, read it in the page. He was transfixed by the deja vu and the horror that he was a character in a story someone had written. Then the monstrous presence burst in behind him and dragged him into the night. Now, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure I missed like a bajillion of pages. Oh, no, I only missed one. Which is still bad, but it's not, because this one is only available in Nightmare. It's still bad that I missed this one, but it's not as bad. Uh, well, anyway, this episode has been long enough, so I'm going to end it here. That's all for this one, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.